Do you own an annuity, either fixed rate, indexed, or variable? Are you paying high fees and getting low returns? If so, Annuity General would like you to have this free book to learn the pitfalls and mistakes of buying an annuity. The Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers contains the little-known truths about annuities, like how to help reduce your fees and increase retirement income. And it's free. That's right, free. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report just for calling. We researched over 1,000 annuities and summarized rates and benefits from financially strong insurers. You get annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and the annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Hurry, supplies are limited. Call now. 800-760-1845. 800-760-1845. 800-760-1845. That's 800-760-1845. Hi, everybody. This is Marsha Hawkins of Elevating with Marsha on Sirius XM 203, 217, and on the app at 967, the Sports Byline USA Radio Network. So, You've heard on my show many times, I have a business where I sell uh, life and health insurance, dental and vision. I have to, uh, with me today, my colleague, Karen Woodcock, who also, uh, we both work independently, but we collaborate on a lot of marketing issues and uh, kind of bounce ideas off each other. And today we thought we would bring you a uh, informative insurance podcast to talk a little bit about what's available to you, given the fact that we're coming up on open enrollment. So hi, Karen. Hi there. How are you today? Good. How are you? At least hopefully this time this will work. We tried it yesterday yes. and it didn't format right for us. So anyways, I thought it was kind of important for us to, we're going to be doing a weekly podcast regarding the insurance because it's so important. I mean, I know we've been doing this quite a few years, but you and I both have learned so much. You know, my background is video marketing, which I still do. I do sales and marketing, but how many times I've gone into a business and, you know, they're complaining about the high cost of insurance that they carry on their employees. So, you know, and just in general, of course, I won't get into everything that's going on in the world right now that's driving prices way up. But insurance is, in my opinion, right up there with your mortgage and your car payment and everything else. It is of super importance and having good quality health insurance available to you, life insurance uh, for the unexpected, uh, really is something that I think we all have. Most people have health insurance, but Honestly, before you got your license, did you really know the fundamentals about how insurance works? No, I didn't know any of that. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And you you know, with health insurance or any insurance, there's so much to know about it. I know. I know. And that's kind of where we come in. Karen and I, while we do sell insurance, we will both tell you that's not really what our end result goal is. Our end result is, is to find you the right plan at the right flight price and what you're actually qualified for. Uh, We love to provide with a detailed education um, about the plans that are available to you, what your options are, because most people don't know, Um, you know, and of course the, the big disclaimer is it does vary state by state by state. So what's available in one state may not necessarily be available in another state, but more important, it may not even be available in the next county. It is that specific. So one of the biggest mistakes that I think people make, and it's not their fault, but they will go online like everybody else does, type in their information, and then what happens, Karen? What happens when they do that? (laughs) Uh The floodgates open and they get bombarded by emails, phone calls, text messages from everybody in the insurance industry. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. I know. It's absolutely crazy. So I've been using my SiriusXM podcast where I talk an awful lot about insurance for that reason alone. Because by the time we get on the phone with people, people are screaming at us like, all I wanted was a quote. And what they don't realize is that it is not a one size fits all program. So we're going to talk a little bit about Obamacare, uh, the Affordable Care Act, ACA compliant. That's what that means. Those plans contain the biggie is pre-existing conditions, but it also contains nine other essential benefits such as maternity, prescription drug coverage, hospitalization, newborn care, maternity, uh, drug coverage, did I say that? Uh, Mental health, 
Um, and again, the big one is pre-existing health conditions and preventative care. So without those, you're, you do not have what's called a comprehensive health care plan. Um, some states are now you're allowed um, to not have health insurance and you're not going to get penalized. We live in Massachusetts where they still do penalize you for not having insurance. I believe the other states are New Jersey, uh, the District of Columbia, and I believe there might be one other state that will penalize for, uh, penalize you if you do not have it. So first of all, I wanna talk a little bit about the ACA plans. They tend to be more restrictive. They tend to be HMOs, although there are some states where they do offer EPOs and PPOs, but they are kind of hard to come by. A lot of carriers have actually pulled out of some of the states because the regulation and the offerings within the state, whether they have their own ex- uh, state exchange, Nevada, California, Colorado, Washington, Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, Pennsylvania, New Kentucky Jersey. now has their own, New Jersey, uh, the District of Columbia, I'm not sure, not licensed in DC. For Karen long. and I collectively are licensed in over 30 states. Um, and I'm adding, uh, we're going to be adding more, we're going to be more on the 40, 40 to 45 side. Um, we're happy to get our license if we need to need to to help somebody. But what we really do is we're licensed in the states that we're most likely to sell in, which is why we do it that way. But we are coming up to open enrollment, which basically just ended in August, uh, August 15th, to be exact, because of the whole COVID pandemic. Uh, some of the, uh, the federal government decided to extend it in most states, um, which was a good move because people were losing their jobs left and right. Although, um, even if you lose your job and you lose your coverage, um, a lot of people don't realize this, but what's the magic number for people to be able to qualify um, outside of open enrollment? 60 days. <laughs> oh, oh. 60 days. 60 days to apply for um, for a special, what we call a special enrollment period. So if you lose your coverage, you have 60 days from the date of your actual loss. So let's say you lose your job on, on say, May, May 20th. Um, your coverage will not end until May 31st, which means you have uh, 20 days from May 31st, or 60 days from May 31st to obtain a qualifying health plan through the marketplace, whether it's a state exchange or the or healthcare.gov. Um, that's what we call special enrollment period. But open enrollment period um, is going to run this year from uh, November 1st in most states and end January 15th in most states. Yeah. So you do have quite a bit of time um, to get your coverage started for 2022. But Karen, talk a little bit about the complexities of getting a um, Obamacare ACA compliant plan because a lot of people, they hear, you know, things on the news and they don't really quite know how that kind of fits into the whole scheme of things when it comes to um, qualifying for an ACA plan. Yeah, well, it's it's pretty much we look at the household. So we're going to ask, you know, how many members are in your household? And then it's it's basically based on your tax household. So what is the household income, the household size, who needs to be insured? So we would need to know about everybody um, to see if you qualify. So it is based on the income and it's based on what they call the federal poverty level. Um, and you would need to be between 100 to 400 percent in order to qualify or some of the tax credits if you do qualify. Um, and you can't have insurance that's offered through your employer. So if you do have insurance, qualified insurance that's offered through your employer, you would need to be taking that as opposed, you wouldn't be eligible for an ACA plan. Right. Well, there's a, uh, if it consumes uh, a certain percentage of your income, you can apply and you may be right. eligible for a premium tax credit. But in my my history, uh, statistically speaking, very few people end up qualifying for yeah. that. And it's unfortunate because lately, you know, you'll have your employer plan where they'll offer, uh, you know, a discount or if you will, or a contribution to the employer, but then the employee, but then when you start adding the spouse or the dependents on, the price goes way up and yeah. a lot of people can't Full price. It. It's like, who can afford that, you know? Yeah. And it's and every year, as you know, it goes up and up and up. So yeah. with the Obamacare, you get the 10 essential benefits, it, it, 10 essential benefits, uh, pre-existing conditions are a non-issue. There's no health questions to qualify for Obamacare. It will start um, the 1st of January every year, unless you're a uh, applying during the year during special enrollment period. But I think the most important thing is, is that there are income guidelines that you need to qualify. And there's that corridor in between qualifying for Medicaid 
in qualifying for an Obamacare plan. And sometimes people fall kind of right in there. And that's when, you know, you either go with a private insurance plan. But unfortunately, you know, if you do have a pre-existing condition, um, you're not going to, in most cases, qualify for, not always, but, you know, if you're type 2 diabetic, there are some plans out there. But the lion's share of the private sector plans that are available for you out there, you simply cannot, um, you're, you're not able to, you're, you're just not going to be able to have anything like that. Um, yeah. You know, you're going to have to be on a group plan with your employer or an ACA plan. So pre-existing conditions, the big myth out there is you can have pre-existing conditions. You can, but only on group insurance where you're part of a group and that risk pool is spread out amongst all of the participants, or you're on an ACA plan. Um, you know, I think a lot of people don't understand that why ACA plans are so expensive is you're in the same risk pool. A healthy 27 year old is in the same risk pool of someone who might be 64 years old with stage five lung cancer or. Um, you know, a, a woman who's pregnant and needing maternity and newborn care. And there's just a, a host of things um, that are going to um, allow people to be in that plan that is going to make up that risk pool. So that's why the ACA plans tend to be so expensive. Usually you have um, on average about an $8,200 max out of pocket, which would translate into 16400 max out of pocket for uh you know for a family um yeah. which you know it's a lot it's, of money <laughs> it's a lot of money yeah. it's a lot of money and a lot of people don't like dealing with the premium tax credit especially if you don't have a definitive um, idea of what your income is going to be year to year if you're in sales or you work off commission you know you can get a year where you do really really well and that's going to bite into your premium tax credit and Voila, at the end of the year, you have to pay it back when you go to file your taxes. So what else did I miss about ACA plans, Karen? Um, if it's a married couple, they have to file jointly. They can't yep. file separate. <laughs> That's yeah. been a big one. Um, I, I've come in contact with a lot of households that do file separately and mm -hmm. they just won't do it. So right. they would have to file together. Yeah, I think it streamlines the premium tax credit. Um, you know, otherwise they don't know who took the tax credit. Um, it, it makes it very convoluted um, for the federal government. They don't need any more help getting convoluted uh, with you know the premium tax credit. So yeah, you do need to file jointly for that. Yeah, it's very it's it is very rigid as far as you know when you do the application. So if you have special circumstances, sometimes it can you know not allow you to have it. Um, when I had somebody like that was caring for their daughter, their adult daughter, but you know, they were caring for her and that just sent the whole application. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're very cookie cutter kind of, um, you know, family situation that it, it might be easy to process. But like you said, you know, if you're somebody who's self-employed and your income is always changing, they're going to be requiring you to provide uh, proof of that changing income mm -hmm. throughout the year. Yeah, which can drive people crazy. Sometimes yeah. they they state their income and then they find out they made more and then the federal government wants some of the premium tax credit back. And, you know, we get calls usually, what, 60 days, 90 days after their yeah. plans are in motion and then they get a notice saying, hey, you've had an increase in your income and it, the price is going to go up and they just say, forget it. So it can be a little bit difficult, but if yeah. you do have a pre-existing health condition, um, and you really, we all need good quality health care for sure, but um, you definitely, ACA or group plans are definitely the way to go, um, you know, over private insurance if that happens to be, you know, what's going on in your life. And, yeah. and or, you know, if you plan on having children, there is no private plan out there that will insure someone who's pregnant, whether you're on the plan and get pregnant or you apply because you're pregnant. Um, that's a pre-existing health condition. They will never cover preg pregnancy in a private plan. That's another myth that's out there. People call in all the time. You know, we get two calls a day, three calls a day. I'm pregnant. I need health insurance. It does not work that way. It is, no. it is deemed a pre-existing health condition. And the only time a private plan would cover it is if you end up having a complication with that delivery, they will cover the complication. But other than that, 
that. They do not cover wellness visits, prenatal visits, and the actual delivery. So that's a, a very, very important thing to understand. And you yeah. definitely need to be on an ACA plan. So if you've lost your job, you can, or lost your qualifying coverage in the, in during the, um, the non-open enrollment periods, you have 60 days to apply. And again, uh, we're going to give our contact information at the end so people can call us and um, email us or whatever they want to do and get on our schedule for open enrollment or if they need a coverage prior to that. So, yeah. you know, I, again, you and I are both on the same page when it comes to the education uh, piece of it and being able to educate the consumer on exactly uh, the plan that they qualify. So let's talk a little bit about private insurance and why there that there can be that void that people get stuck on. So personally, um, and I think you kind of agree, Karen, is that I prefer to write medically underwritten plans. So you have your short-term plans in the private sector, you have hospital indemnity plans, and then we just picked up a new line, which is a hybrid of that, uh, which also does require medical underwriting. So on the short-term side, we do have a, a plan offering with a three-year plan. You do have to meet the deductible every term. So every year, you're, you're, it resets just like it does with a regular plan. Um, but you don't have to prove insurability until the three years is up. So somebody who's retiring at 62, that's healthy, that wants to kind of get to Medicare, that three-year plan, I sell a lot of it for retirees that are just trying to get from 62 to 65 with Medicare. Um, again, you don't have to prove insurability once you're on. It, you do go through medically uh, medical underwriting. So you know once you're approved, you're all set. Versus um, using a short-term plan, whether you're doing three months or six months or uh, nine months or 12 months, uh, it can be a little bit dicey in that, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where you can really kind of get yourself into trouble if you're not going through a medical underwriting uh, system. So we're going to take a quick break um, and then we're going to come right back. Um, this is Marsha Hawkins and Karen Woodcock and we're going to be right back. If you're not using podcasting for your business, you will. Not having a podcast is like not having a website. Hi, this is Marsha Hawkins of Elevating with Marsha on Sirius XM Channel 211, the Dan Patrick Channel. You can get your business on my podcast. It's a great way to create super fans for your business with a controlled message in a news format. What better way to get in front of your intended audience, your clients, your customers, or patients? Please contact me at hello at elevatedmediaesq.com about getting your business on my show, Elevating with Marsha. We also can create a personalized podcast that you can use on your website or social media channels. Contact me at hello at elevatedmediaesq.com and join me on Elevating with Marsha on Sirius XM Channel 211, the Dan Patrick Channel. The Double Play! It's baseball season, and you're ready to go all out. So you ordered the essentials to make game day a success, like a jersey, a power recliner, and a bigger screen. And you used your Bank of America customized cash rewards credit card, choosing to earn 3% cash back on online shopping. Rewards that you put toward an essential piece of the celebration, an air horn. Apply for yours at bankofamerica.com slash more rewarding. Copyright 2021, Bank of America Corporation. My doctor prescribed me Viagra. It wasn't covered by my insurance, so it was costing me like $65 a pill. That's expensive. Over 20 million guys like us use Viagra. Over a certain age, we just need it. I found a way to pay less than $3 a pill and get virtually the same effect of the $65 pill. I heard an ad just like this on the radio called, and for $99, I got 40 generic versions of the $65 pill. Save yourself money and call right now and get over 40 pills for $99. There's no embarrassment here to use Viagra. If we're over 50, we need it, but not at high prices. Call now with your credit card and get the 40 pill special for just $99. 800-399-3691. 800-399-3691. That's 800-399-3691. 
between jobs, retiring, or just need health or life insurance, please visit myhealth-quotes.com or call 833-687-5261. Before you try to get a quote online, call us. We will provide you with the information most sites will not. We teach you exactly what life or health insurance plan you qualify for, how to use your plan, and maximize your benefits. We provide you with the information to make a knowledge-based decision to ensure selecting the right plan. MyHealth-Quotes.com to schedule an appointment. All right, everybody, we did have to take a quick break. Again, you're talking with Marsha Hawkins and Karen Woodcock, and we're talking insurance. All right, Karen, so getting back to the private plans that we were talking about. So can you get go into why sometimes not having a medically underwritten plan or you go, let's say you think you're going to have a, a new job in, in three months, um, you're not quite sure, that why it might be better to go for a six-month plan over a three-month plan if you're unsure and what the ramifications are if you happen to have that, that um, three-month and you have to reapply. What are some of the pitfalls with that? So the, you always want a plan, the, the longer lo- the longevity of it, the better, because you never know when something's going to happen. I, I'm working with someone right now and she's transitioning in between plans and we're looking into just a short term, but you know, she said, well, let's just make it for one month. And I said, let's do it a little bit longer because if say for instance, her, her insurance is gonna end today. And if something were to happen today, let's say she fell and broke her leg, but they can't do surgery until the swelling goes down next week, which we all know happens. Mm-hmm. Her insurance now is not going to cover that because it's now a pre-existing condition and her plan ends tonight. And a new plan, even if I put her in with that same company, they're not going to cover that because it's a, an entirely new plan mm-hmm. and it's going to be deemed as a pre-existing condition now and it won't be covered. Right. And she's not eligible to apply for the Affordable Care Act because she doesn't have a special enrollment. So, well, you know, well, short term insurance definitely can can be that vehicle that can bridge you between jobs. It can, um, you know, if you're super healthy and you know that, you know, you're not worried, especially if you're young and healthy. Um, and you just want to be covered in the event of a ruptured appendix or a leg break or an arm break or something like that. Short-term insurance is definitely applicable. Where I don't feel, and maybe you agree or disagree with me, I don't feel that short-term insurance in the private sector is really for somebody who's relatively um, not healthy, taking a lot of medications. First of all, you may not qualify, but I had an instance where I had a Um, a minister in Ohio who an agent got on the phone, sold him a plan that was not medically underwritten. He had mentioned that his wife was pre-diabetic. Well, you and I both know in the insurance world, pre-diabetic or pre-diabetes, you're deemed a diabetic. So there's no, there's no gray area there. So she unfortunately had a medical event and they attributed it to her diabetes and they didn't pay the claim. And the yeah. company did not do medical underwriting until she actually had a medical event. So that's why it's super important to talk to a knowledgeable, educated agent. I mean, there's a lot of people out there in the insurance world that is trained to just sell a product at all cost. It doesn't matter. Just get them on a plan and move on to the next one. You and I we're not like that. Um, no. We want you to buy a plan that you can actually use. We want to educate you on how to maximize the benefits of the plan and what the pitfalls are. So if you were able to go online and just select a plan and apply for it, that type of scenario that you would not know that if you were you know, deemed pre-diabetic, that in the insurance world, because what they're going to do is they're going to pull what's called an MIB report. That's kind of like the credit report of your, of your medical history. I always tell people, be careful what you get diagnosed with or, you know, what you want to get diagnosed with or what you get prescribed. Because if a medication is prescribed for one thing, but it has a dual purpose of another, you could get denied coverage uh, because of that and then be deemed uninsurable. So be careful about what you beg to be diagnosed with or what you beg to take a prescription drug for because you have no idea whether or not that's going to come back to bite you in the rear end when you try to get, you know, uh, private insurance, if that's all you're eligible for at the time. So it really, really is important to understand all that. And that's kind of where 
Karen and I come in, we are very dedicated to, um, you know, making sure that the plan you purchase is the plan that you, you're qualified for, that you can afford it, that is going to get the job done for you. Um, you know, we go over the brochure with you, we send it to you, let you go through it, answer any questions that you have. But it's really, really important to understand that you have to be qualified for that plan in order for it to pay the benefits. God forbid you need them. So very, very important. And then Karen and I also just picked up a new line that we're very excited about. It's kind of a hybrid plan. It it kind of walks like an ACA plan. It kind of talks like an ACA plan, but it's not an ACA plan. But it tends to be uh, less expensive. It automatically renews. You don't need to constantly prove insurability. It's for some people... It is the answer to your health insurance prayers, and it's a very good plan, and it's something that Karen and I are going to do a whole webinar on and explain uh, the intricate details of this particular plan because, um, you know, we've been doing this a long time, and I am grateful that we kind of tripped onto this carrier and very excited about it. It's a great company. In some cases, you actually make money back on your on your plan, which where do you ever hear it? Never happens. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, it's really, it's, it's really a good plan. So Karen, uh, other than the health insurance, we, we do life, but we're going to do another whole webinar on life. We're going to do, be doing a podcast uh, once a week. I should say not a webinar podcast once a week um, about the insurance. We're going to do another whole one on life insurance, but besides that, what else do we offer? We offer dental. Dental, dental is huge. Life. Um, Critical illness, accident, um, vision. <laughs> vision, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you get diagnosed with cancer, yeah, or you get diagnosed with a critical illness, it will pay you a lump sum benefit, um, which will help pay for your deductibles on your plans and so forth. Um, yeah, um, you know, there's... And I think, uh, you know, dental is a big one. Like, uh, so many people will call us when they have a dental issue. <laughs> It's like, I always say, you know, that's like getting in a car accident and then trying to get car insurance. You can't do it. You know, nobody is going to pay for something like that. You should have had insurance before you started having problems. Exactly. You really, you know, it's, and and like with this company we're with, I, I think one of the biggest things is being proactive with your health. You know, we all need to be more proactive and we all need to look at the whole picture, you know, and, and everything that could happen. And and I know it, it's, you know, it, it can be expensive, but the alternative can be even more expensive. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you go to the doctors and you're, you're diagnosed with high blood pressure and you're 50 pounds overweight, a lot of people are like, give me the medication. Uh, you and I both don't, we don't agree with that. No. Get the 50 pounds off and the blood pressure should unless it's hereditary, should come down. Because again, I I can't stress this enough, you know, whatever you're diagnosed with with is going to be in your MIB report and it can make you um, uninsurable in certain cases if you um, are diagnosed with something that they do not insure. So it's like bipolar, uh, bipolar disorder is one of them. That's a knockout question for a lot of health and life insurance. So a lot of people are saying, oh, I know I'm bipolar. And I always say, are you diagnosed with that? Because if you are, that's a knockout question on a lot of plans, if not all of them. So it's, again, I always say, please be careful what you beg to be diagnosed with or prescribed because whether you take that medication or not, it's in your MIB report and it can deem you uninsurable. Mm-hmm. And like the good point about dental insurance is to say, I need a crown, I need dental insurance. Well, there's wait periods with that. No company is going to give, you know, take $36 a month of your insurance on average um, for a dental plan and then turn around and give you an $1,800 crown. Um, I've had a lot of people buy it thinking that they'll call back up and say, well, I canceled it because they didn't pay for my crown. And then they go, then they realize they do need the insurance and they try to get it again. And they don't realize that they're knocked out from applying for two years because they bought insurance, used it and canceled it. It doesn't work that way. You have to think of dental insurance as a maintenance program that you pay in every month so that the funds are there should you need um, to have a crown or a cavity right. filled or something like that. So, yeah. And that's the kind of stuff that we're going to get into on the podcast every week is really educating the consumer mm-hmm. about how to, um, 
you know, get the coverage that you need, but ensuring that you understand all of that. I honestly, I didn't understand any of that prior to, and I kind of fell into the business as did you, Um, you know, my sales and marketing, my video marketing, I I recognized that a lot of businesses were spending a lot of money on health and, and, and benefits for their clients. And if I can save them money, they can have that extra money to go into their marketing. So I love doing mm-hmm. that as well. But yeah. We've got a great vehicle to communicate with people and we're going to be doing a podcast once a week so we can, you know, educate the consumer on all of that. Anything else you want to add, Karen? Oh boy. <laughs> How about our contact information? Oh, that would be good. <laughs> um, so I can be reached. My uh, email address is K as in Karen, J as in Jean, Woodcock, W O O D. C O C K 99 at gmail.com. And my phone number is 413-847-1383. And chances are you're probably watching this on one of the social media channels. So obviously you can direct messages there. You can either ask for Karen or Marsha, and then we'll get back to you. Um, we collaborate on a lot of stuff, um, but I'm sure that um, unless it's a very unique situation, we probably can find you the right solution. So my contact information is Marsha, M-A-R-C-I-A-J, as in Janelle Hawkins, H-A-W-K-I-N-S at gmail.com. And my direct line, you can send me a text message or call at 413 413- Three seven four two one zero zero. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit about life insurance, and we're also going to delve into group insurance for your business to offer to your employees. Karen Woodcock, thank you so much. I am Marsha Hawkins. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Elevating with Marsha on Sirius XM 203, 217, and on the app at 967, the Sports Byline USA Radio Network. Join us next week for another informative Uh, podcast about insurance. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.